Hi again. This is an example of real data that I downloaded this morning. If you notice the name of the, of the book, of the workbook, is Coca-Cola June 1st, 2015. I went to the site, this particular site, and I downloaded the data or copied and pasted the data of Coca-Cola sales over the last 15 or 14 years. And what I'm going to try and do is use Excel to forecast sales using cyclical data. If you select the data and try to insert a chart, you will discover, and I did it before, that the data is cyclical. It is, It has a trend going up, but it also has probably higher sales in the summer. So what I'm going to try and do with this example is forecast sales using regression and take care of the cyclical data. So what I did next is I copied the sheet to a new sheet and added an if function, trying to have three different variables for second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. I'm not going to do anything about the first quarter. It's going to be my baseline. So basically, if you have 12 months, you're going to have 11 variables. We call it a dummy variable. You can call it anything you want. And if you notice here, for the fourth quarter, we have a one for the fourth quarter. Since the first quarter is ignored, we are going to have zeros. And you can check all the different lines. We have an extra variable that indicates when we are in quarter two, three, or four. I'm going to add another variable for forecasting, which is going to be the period, indicating which quarter we are in. So we are going to have one, to all the way to the number of periods we're going to have a quarters. In our case, if you go all the way to the end, we have 50 quarters. So this is basically the data. I am going to try and forecast sales based on the last 50 quarters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to forecast sales or revenue based on the other three variables. So I'm going to go to my data, data analysis, and go to regression. Select under dependent variable Y, the billions or the revenue, control shift zero down. I'm going to select also the other four variables, control shift zero down. And note that I have labels indicating that the first row has labels. And I'm going to create the residuals. The residuals are going to help me see what the focus of data is compared to actual data. And when you're going to say OK, you're going to get the regression results. R square is pretty high, 0.89. The standard error is about 0.9. We may be off plus minus 2 billions. Uh, and this is pretty good for 50 observations. And these are the different variables associated with the regression. The p-value is irrelevant. Usually what you want to do is try to make sure that it's less than 0.5. But we'll find out in a minute whether our regression is really going to work. So if you look, these are the uh, residuals. This is the forecasted or predicted values. If you use the function that we just created or the coefficients that we just created and went back to the original data, this is what the predicted values would have been. So let me select that range, control shift zero down, copy it, go to my data and paste it. And the residual would be the difference between this value and this value. I can copy it, but you can go back to sheet one and see, for example, that for the first period, it's 0.9, meaning that 4.79 minus 0.388 is 0.9. Now, I always ask myself, how am I doing compared to the original data? So I'm going to select the data, control, shift, arrow down. This is the predicted data. If I had to go back and forecast all this original data, this is what it would be. I'm going to copy it, go to my chart, 
and paste it. And as you see, my forecast is uh, very accurate. And this almost represents reality. So I can use this data now to forecast the future. So these are my coefficients. I copy them and I brought them down here to see whether if I wanted to continue now with Q2 of 2015, Q3 and Q4, I'm trying to forecast the next three quarters that are not published yet. So I can calculate using the same formula to find out whether we are in Q1, Q2, or Q3. Actually, I don't have, I can continue all the way to another period and add, add here to Q1. I will attempt to forecast the next four periods today. So the next four periods are periods 51 all the way to 54, and I'm going to use the regression values that I just uh, calculated. So I'm going to say equal the intercept, absolute addressing, plus some product of these values with my forecasted values, F4. So basically it's going to say 1 times 1.14 plus 0 times 0 0.88 plus 0 times 0.27, plus 51 times the coefficient here, 0 0.169. And I forgot to close the parentheses. It closed for me. And I'm forecasting the next four periods. How is it compared to what we had in the past? I'm going to take this data, Control-C, go to my chart, Control-V, and this really indicates, or so this is forecasting what uh, we are going to sell, or Coca-Cola is going to sell over the next four periods or four quarters that I don't have any information for. Try to do it on your own, and then I'm going to have an exercise for you.